Hello everybody, it's Sylvie. Welcome back to the TBR Diaries. Welcome to another weekly reading vlog. Uh, today is actually Wednesday. I just didn't want to be on camera for the last two days. I didn't really want to talk to anybody, so I didn't do that. But today is Wednesday, but I do have reading updates for you. If you watched last week's vlog, you'll remember that I was about halfway through the blade itself which I made a little bit of progress on and have some things to say. And I also chose my Gothtober TVR TBR in last week's vlog. So I'm also reading a book off that. I'm also reading The Book Eaters by Sonia Dean. Is that correct? I don't have a physical book, so I can't fact check myself. Um, but anyway, let me tell you about The Blade itself. So when I left off with you last week, I was almost halfway through. According to my Kindle, at exactly the 50% mark of this book, people were in places and I could see how everybody was going to wind up interacting with each other. Although I still am not sure why, but I can kind of see the pieces falling into place potentially. Having said that, I'm still intrigued as to why some of the characters are in the situations they're in in the first place. So our character in the north, Logan Ninefingers, uh, he is a barbarian, he wound up kind of stuck on his own in the north, has wound up with this magician ma magus? Ma magus? Mage? Wizard? Guy? Um, and they've travelled to the south and I, I don't know why. Everybody else's kind of character arcs makes sense because there's the inquisitor doing his inquisitioning, um, there's, I don't know anybody's names, but there's like a really obnoxious aristocrat guy who's being an obnoxious aristocrat so like everybody else's situations make sense. Whereas with Logan, I don't know why he's in the situation that he's in and I would like to know why and I'm hoping we get that answered because it's just gonna bug me otherwise I'm perfectly happy for there to be like serendipity in stories and obviously you've got to get your characters into position for your plot to happen but it just makes no sense. The other thing that's happened um, by halfway through, introduced in the second, like, section of this book. What's it called? Like, second act? Part two of this book? Uh, there's another perspective in another part of the world who has been introduced. We've now had a couple of perspective chapters from her. And I want to know. I want to know why. I want to know how it's all going to tie up. And I'm hoping that it actually does something in this book, because there is a common storytelling device for sure, but um, I see it a lot in fantasy, maybe just because I read a lot of fantasy, um, in a series where you'll have this like secondary person in a different place kind of doing their own thing that's peppered in throughout the first book, but doesn't actually mean anything to the plot until the end, and then something happens, you know, like, oh, it was all connected all along. Like, I'm hoping that doesn't happen and we actually get some payoff from her storyline in this book. So that's my, like, thoughts. And then as for the book eaters, I am listening to that. I found it on audio. If I'd been reading this on my Kindle like I was going to, because that's the edition I've got, I think I would have DNF this really early on. But because I wound up listening to it for like a couple of hours while I was doing stuff and obviously just like letting it roll, I didn't dislike it, but I wasn't very interested until something happened right at the point where I ended up stopping listening to do something else. And I think if I'd not made it that far, I'd probably already have DNF this book, but I can now tell you a little bit more than I knew when I was doing my TBR. This is set in a contemporary modern day Britain. There are several ancient book eater families throughout Britain. They're dying out. They're not human, but they look human, but they, they literally do eat books. I thought maybe it was like a metaphor and they ate stories and I suppose technically they are eating stories and that's how they like gather knowledge, but they literally eat books, but occasionally a book eater is born not as a book eater but a mind eater and needs to like eat human brains I think like quite literally so that's the, the setup and our main character her son is a mind eater so she's kind of on the run from her family for reasons that are not entirely clear as of yet um, and looking for a way to not have her son need to like eat people's brains because that's obviously not ideal. So initially I was worried that this book was going to be more literary fiction than fantasy, um, just with like a speculative element, and it's definitely more fantasy heavy than a lot of speculative fiction I've read, which I'm pleased about. And I swear I'm not determined to hate this book, I feel like everything I've said about this book is like my expectations are really negative, and that's, that's, I mean that is kind of true, 
but I don't want to hate this book. Obviously, I want to enjoy it, but I think what it's doing is it's like a doing a feminism by way of giving you this really gross, aggressive, patriarchal setup and exploring how bad that is, and therefore it's a feminist book. Hopefully, it will be more interesting than that. But I just feel like there's been, or at least I've read several books where they're being touted as like super feminist and actually what it's doing is just exposing an in-world patriarchy and labeling that as bad which is true but I'm hoping for more nuance than that is what I'm saying or I'm hoping for something a little bit more complex and interesting than that. I might be doing the book eaters a great disservice by labeling it as a like patriarchy bad feminism book and obviously the fantasy element is quite heavy and is quite is quite strong is the plot and I just I want to know how everything's going to come together and how it's going to work. That's where I'm at so far. Uh, like I say today's Wednesday I'm hoping you you know what a reading vlog is I'm hoping to read more and I'll tell you about it when I do. Hey hi hello pals it's Thursday evening I'm all snuggly in my bed because I was just doing the I was joining in with the reading sprints for October and I didn't want to leave my comfy cozy nest. Um, but that does mean that I actually have a reading object for you. I've been reading this evening The Blade Itself. I'm now, um, I'm, I'm this, this far. Can you see where my bookmark is? I'm this far into the book. I'm on page 306 out of like about 430, I think. I'm still really enjoying it. I feel like a bad booktuber because I'm not holding the book up while I talk about it. Um, I'm still really enjoying this. Um, again, I know that I've said this before, but I don't know if it was this week or in last week's vlog. I'm really enjoying how the perspectives that we're following, they're kind of peripheral to the big major events that are occurring on like a large political scale, because there's this war going on between the North and the South, and all of our perspectives are not involved in that kind of at all, which I'm really enjoying because I've read enough stories that are about war and fantasy worlds. So something else that I'm thinking about this book I guess is that I think the pace of this most people would probably call it quite slow paced because we're not involved in this big major conflict and we're kind of looking at characters who are a bit more on the sidelines and kind of doing their own thing and honestly at this point I'm still not sure how all of the various plot lines are gonna match up and I'm already 70% of the way through this book. And then there's this secondary plotline that I think I've mentioned following a completely new woman in a completely new part of the world who's also got some like mysterious shit happening to her. And I've no idea how it's all going to come together. I do hope that it does come together in this book because although I have the whole series and I can continue on straight away, it does frustrate me when the first book of a series is just setting the scene and building up for stuff in book two. Like, I don't mind having a first book in a trilogy or a first book in a series that is sort of laying the groundwork, but I do want something to happen. So I'm hoping that something does happen in the next 100, 120 pages. This is definitely the kind of fantasy that I like to read and the kind of fantasy that I wanted to be reading in autumn. So I'm generally just having a really good time with this. I've also listened to some more of the book eaters and I wrote some notes. Basically everything that I've said previously I think is still holding true. Also I just need to trust my gut I think with books when I'm like mm, not sure that's going to be for me because I'm reading this or listening to this and I'm just not sure it's for me. I think I think I should have trusted myself on that one. Um, honestly if I wasn't listening to this, if I was reading it physically I think I'd have DNF by now. But obviously listening is much more passive than reading a book um, and I can just kind of have it on while I'm doing other things so I've kept it rolling and there's nothing else that I've got like waiting for me to listen to that I'm more excited about so I'm sticking with this one. This book is told in two time, time perspectives, timelines. So we've got the modern day where our main character is on the run from her family, is trying to find um, a cure for her son so that her son doesn't have to eat people's brains like a weird fucked up zombie. And that's intriguing. I don't want to spoil anything, but we've had, we've met a couple of other people and things are looking intriguing. There's a little bit of like a mystery going on. I feel like some kind of family feud shenanigans 
stuff might be happening and I'm very interested in that. And then the other timeline is, it's the past, it's not that far in the past, it's only a few years in the past when she was being shipped off to be married and have babies. And I'm so uninterested in that whole timeline. It's just, it's just, and this sounds really callous, but it's just her being pissed off that women are treated so badly and that women are treated as property and as a means to further the family line. And I just feel like I've read that book before and that is not a story that I care to read over and over. And I just get pissed off and frustrated at the situations that these women are in and then the book ends and I'm still pissed off and frustrated and like what, what good did that do anybody? So yes, that's kind of where I'm at with that book. We'll see what happens at this point. I've been speaking for 13 minutes. Let's hope a good chunk of that was me sitting in silence that I can cut out of the vlog. Um, anyway, it's fairly late. I should go to bed and I will catch you tomorrow. Hey pals, it's Friday morning. I have decided to DNF the book eaters. I listened to some more while I was walking the dog this morning and I've decided it's just not one for me, which I feel like is a bit of a cliche reason we give when we don't like a book, but we don't want to be like critical. But I don't think I really have any criticisms of the book. Um, also, I am only halfway through, so any criticisms that I do have might be not quite valid, <laughs> I suppose. Um, but basically, I just don't care for the woman fighting back in the face of the patriarchy or, or no more specifically women trying to escape from the patriarchy because as I said the other day I just get pissed off at all the shitty situations that are being presented um and I'm like I don't want to read about women being treated badly um and it's just a lot of that and then the woman will escape at the end and it's like well you're fine you're traumatized but you're fine but like nothing's changed and I just find that a little bit I just don't care to read it I'm I find it like a little bit frustrating to read and I just don't get any I feel like I don't get anything out of reading that kind of story which like I say I've only read half the book so that might not be how this turns out um but that's what it's been so far and unfortunately I don't care about anything else enough in this book to continue so I'm DNFing but that might be the exact thing that you like in a book so don't take this as like a anti-recommendation just just one that I didn't like. Anyway, I just wanted to pop in and give you that little update so that I can put it aside in my brain and just be done with the book eaters. I'm gonna leave you there. I will hopefully check in later on today, having read something else, maybe having picked a new audiobook. The day is full of possibilities. Um, so yeah, good evening. I ha have read a whole chunk of this. I feel like I'm too not where I'm supposed to be. Um, I've read a whole chunk of this. This is The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. This was on my autumnal TBR. It was also on my Glosstober TBR. Yes, this was a host recommendation. Almost like half, well, probably not halfway through. I'm on page 136 and there's 350 pages. So I'm like a third of the way through. I'm less than a third of the way through. That can't be right. My maths is wrong because I look like I'm more than a third of the way through. Yeah, my maths is wrong. Look, I've started this book this evening, this afternoon, today. Wow, what is wrong with me? It's very good. I'm enjoying it very much. I'm, like I say, listening to the audio and it's going quite quickly. And actually like, there's like not a lot of words on the page. It's not that like tightly packed of a type. And I'm really enjoying this. It's spooky, it's creepy, but it's actually not too spooky or creepy. And I think that is down to the audiobook narrator because that it's just kind of a kind of a very enjoyable listen um and they're not making it sound very like they don't have a spooky creepy voice to my ear anyway let me tell you what this book is about I've definitely spoken about this a couple times basically we're following Kara who is freshly divorced and has moved in with her uncle to help him run his sort of museum of curiosities and while she is looking after the museum, she finds a hole in the drywall in one of the walls. And when she and her friend, I want to say he's called Steve. He's called Simon. It was close. Um, 
they are looking at it to patch it up, realize that it extends into this great big hallway, and then they had an investigate and they found themselves in some kind of weird parallel world or weird place which leads to various potentially parallel worlds. It's and there's like weird, spooky, creepy stuff happening. There's notes on the walls like pray that they are hungry and they can hear your thoughts, which is great and creepy. Not super intensely spooky so far. There's definitely a lot of room for things to get spookier. What I did like is it kind of got into the weirdness very quickly. I don't read a whole ton of horror, but some of the, I think this is probably more on the thriller side of things actually, rather than horror, which is more like fantastical. But the more thriller things that I've read tend to take a long time to get to the thrilling stuff. Whereas this, got into the spookiness very quickly, which I appreciate. I'm just, I'm just really enjoying it. I'm having a really good time. I'm very glad I DNF'd the book eaters because this is much more enjoyable for me. And yeah, good decisions were made this morning. Probably gonna get this one done this weekend for sure because I've already read over a third of it after that excruciating maths problem that I gave myself. So that is, that is that. It's Saturday. I have reading updates. Ooh, that was elegant, wasn't it? Um, first of all, how good do these two look together? I've taken the dust jacket off, the blade itself. Um, but first I will talk to you about the hollow places. I am now, I'm here. So I'm like two thirds, three, qu three quarters of the way through, I'd say. Um, I love this. So that's gonna really annoy me. I am loving this so, so much. It is spooky and creepy, but I'm not too scared. And I don't know if that's just because I'm listening to the audio and I don't know if this makes sense, but the like tone, the vibe of the narration is more what I would associate with like something quite lighthearted, like a rom-com kind of vibe, just the like tone that the narrator's got. And so I don't know if that is making this feel less scary or if it just isn't super scary. But either way, I, that's a good thing in my book because I'm a giant baby and I don't like being scared. I, it means I'm just having a really good time with this. Also, there is a good sense of humour like running throughout the book. Um, T. Kingfisher, I think I've mentioned this when I put this on my TBR. I've had several books from T. Kingfisher like on my radar as things that sounded like something I would be interested in, that I would enjoy. And I'm definitely going to pick up more of their work because... The sense of humour that runs through this, even though it's a scary book, is just something I really get on with. So that is also a great thing about this book, is that I think it's introducing me to a new author who hopefully I'm going to love. Um, as I've mentioned before, so she's found this portal through a hole in the wall of her uncle's weird museum of wonders, and her and her barista neighbour, whose name I've forgotten again, is he Simon? He's Simon. Um, they've, they've, they've gone through and they've encountered a weird place where there's like portals to alternative realities. They've encountered some weird creepy monsters and they've encountered messages and also the kind of knowledge that the more you think about these weird creepy monsters, the stronger they become and like they can hear your thoughts and that's how they find you. And we all know it's impossible to not think about something without giving too much away. They don't spend the whole book in this weird, creepy, spooky land. They sort of come back and it appears that maybe these things have been following them somehow. And so I like the way that this is told because it's not like just generally stories of this kind. I like the narrative where you're not just in the creepy, spooky, weird dimension where which it goes down, but that you're in your like normal, safe, mundane environment and then weird shit has like followed you somehow. That's just, that's just a storyline that I enjoy. So overall, I'm really loving this. I think I've got a couple of hours, maybe even only an hour and a half left on the audiobook. So potentially, realistically won't get this finished today, but could if I really wanted to. And then as for the blade itself, look at that catching the light. Um, Where am I? Ooh, I read a little bit more. I'm on page 339. So I've got about 80 pages left and I want to get this finished this evening. That is an actual goal, whereas this is like a, maybe, but probably not. But like, I want to get this finished this evening um, so I can read a whole book tomorrow because I want to do that. Anyway, getting ahead of myself. Things are going to come to a head. 
I'm not exactly sure, exactly sure how, which is fine. I don't need to know until it happens. That's cool. Um, but I hope it happens soon. I think I've mentioned that this is a relatively slow paced book and that's fine by me. I'm on board with that, but I want things to happen soon. Not because I feel like it's too slow and it's dragging. I'm just conscious there's only 80 pages left. And even though this is only the first book in a series, so it would be reasonable for it to end on a bit of like a dramatic shit's just happened cliffhanger kind of a thing. I would prefer that it didn't because I prefer when I get a bit more resolution in my books and I prefer when things don't happen super quickly when there's been this much build up. If the whole book had been faster, then I wouldn't mind quick resolution. But because the book's been quite slow, I feel like it would feel rushed if things happened too quickly. So I hope, I think things are about to happen. And then presumably we'll put, that will put all the characters in place, but things happen in books two and three. I was gonna keep reading, but then I decided to film a video instead, which might be my downfall because I could have probably kept reading and like finished this in one go, but I do want to film today. And I will check in with you possibly later on this evening, possibly tomorrow to let you know how I'm getting on. I'll talk to you later. Happy Sunday. <clears throat> I finished two books. It is not even, it's not even the middle of the day yet. It's not even 12 a.m. I finished two books. I finished The Hollow Places this morning on audio. Um, would I recommend reading a spooky, creepy book while you are out at 7.30 a.m. in the mist and the fog on your own? Potentially not. I mean, I had the dog with me, but he wants to be friends with everybody, so he's not much of a guard dog. Don't think he's gonna protect me from any monsters. Regardless, I finished this, I loved it. It wasn't super scary, but it was very creepy in a way that I really liked. Um, I kind of, I'm just repeating all the stuff I've said before, I really liked the, I mean, I listened to the audiobook, but when I say the voice, I mean like the voice of the book, like the authorial voice and the tone of the book. It had a sense of humour throughout that I really enjoyed. So it was creepy and spooky, but it didn't feel like a straight up horror. It almost felt like a kind of horror contemporary. I don't know if that's a thing or if it's a thing I've just missed, but I don't know, it kind of, that's how I describe it. And I really, really like this. Did I like the way it wrapped up? I'm not sure. I kind of never really care about the way that a horror wraps up as long as it's not really shit. And it wasn't shit. It was fine, it was good. We got a sub resolution. I'm never sure how neatly I want things tied up with the like spooky paranormal horror kind of things. And it wasn't too neat. Everything wasn't like fully explained, but we did get like a little bit of, a little bit of that. Um, so on the whole, I really enjoyed this. Would highly recommend. And like I say, definitely gonna read more of T. Kingfisher's stuff. I finished The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. I really like this, really intrigued to see where the next books go. I do think the ending was a little bit, mm, not exactly rushed and not exactly cliffhangery, but kind of looking in those directions, but it's the first book in a trilogy, so that is kind of to be expected, but I still would have rather had a little bit more like plot resolution for this first book. I'm very intrigued by where things ended. And like, it was fairly slow paced, but I really liked all the world building and we got like a good, I feel like we got a good look at the various different parts of this world and the kind of various threats or problems that are brewing in different places. So I feel like it has set the scene very well. And I know that's kind of the point of the first book, but I just feel like it's done it in a way that's really clicked with my brain. And I feel like I've got a good understanding of the world that we're in and some of the shit that might go down. I really did enjoy this. I had a good time with it, but I'm more interested in seeing what happens next. Um, And that's, that's my reading update. But like I said, today it's only midday and I kind of want to read lots today. I kind of want to just have like a really reading heavy day. I think I'm going to go with Yellow Jasmine and hopefully get that finished sharpish and then see how I go. But I finished two books this morning. I finished three books this week because I finished two books, but I've taken three off my TBR because I DNF'd the book eaters. I'm rambling. I'm gonna dig in and catch up with you later. Okay, you're getting my up to the minute thoughts on this book apparently. Uh, so I am, well, I'm on page 16, but the book starts on page nine. So I'm five pages in. 
I can tell I'm going to love this. I've spoken about Caitlin Starling before. I read The Luminous Dead. I absolutely loved it. Outstanding. One of the best books I read last year. This is already really good. I feel okay giving you spoilers because we're five pages in. So uh, our main character, Evelyn, is a shipping magnate. Magnate? Is that how you pronounce that? Um, and we open the book with her and other shipping men uh, watching a ship be set alight because it was carrying plague. Then there's also a mysterious encounter where she gives a little girl poison to make her look sick so she can escape the city that they live in, which I think is kind of failing, dying, what have you. Um, and then she goes to meet, I think, one of her ships that's just come in. And there's a mysterious sickness. And those are all the spoilers I'll give you because it's a short book, but those are literally the first five pages. So I feel like that's okay spoilers. Um, but I am so intrigued. Everything has got going so quickly, which is exactly what you want from such a short book. I think this is like 125 pages. So I am, I'm gonna love this, I can tell. And I just felt like telling you that apparently. I have read Yellow Jessamine. Um, this was, this was really good. I loved this. This is my second Caitlin Starling. I have the third of her books, which was given to me by Shannon for my birthday. And I'm really tempted to start that, but I think I'm gonna save it. This was so good. I'm not gonna tell you anything more that happens beyond what I've already told you, because it's, it's a short book and that will be spoilers and you should just enjoy it. But I will say poison and woman going mad. So if that's your vibe, um, it's compared on the back to Daphne du Maurier, which I feel like I've not actually read any of her books, but I feel like it's an apt comparison. It's very like gothic, very woman slowly losing her mind for weird reasons. And it just didn't let up. It just kind of, the tension kept building. New stuff kept being like given to you that just increased the tension. I feel it was paced really well. And I feel like enough was explained or semi-explained that I didn't feel totally lost. And I felt like satisfied at the end that I'd been given enough answers for the various things that were introduced. Again, it wasn't over explained and the ending was weird and mysterious. And I really, really love this. I would highly recommend if that sounds even vaguely like your thing, because it's a short book, so you can't really go wrong. Um, so it's the third book I finished today. Third book I finished this week, feeling pretty good about that. And I kind of want to keep reading. I don't know what else I'm going to read today, but instead of debating to myself on camera for the next 20 minutes, I'll just go and do it alone. Um, and then I'll, I'll let you know. So there'll be at least one more reading update from me today. But this is the most productive reading day I've had in months. And I'm having a great time. Hello, and welcome to another reading update. This is a blank book. Ah. I've started A Taste of Golden Iron by Alexandra Rowland. I am 30 pages in, I've read one chapter. I am already so invested in these characters and in this story and in this world. I don't think I've ever become this emotionally attached to characters this quickly, so that is a good sign. But I now have very high hopes for this book and I'm gonna be very disappointed if those hopes are not met. I can't tell you much more about this book, because I'm only 30 pages in, but we've met our prince main character who is called Kadu, Kadao. Um, he is thrilled not to have to be Sultan. His sister, who is Sultan, has just had a baby and the father of this baby does not trust our prince because many princes would be keen to get their new niece out of the way so that they could be closer to inheriting the throne. That is not the case with our prince here, but it has led to a bit of a messy situation. He is now in a difficult position, the politics of which I don't fully understand yet, uh, but he is having a new bodyguard assigned, which is the bodyguard that is mentioned in that blurb. Um, and I think they're gonna have a, a fun prince bodyguard romance time. Um, but this world also very intriguing, intriguing, intriguing. As you can see, it's like a really dense, Actually, it doesn't look that big, but it is like a 500 page book. And so far the politics and the fantasy elements, I'm very much enjoying. Our prince can like tell, like taste the composition of metal by touching it and the strength of their kingdom nation is built on the reputation of their coin. And I'm sure that's gonna be relevant in the plot as it goes on. But yeah, it's all very intriguing. Like I say, I'm already really attached to these characters. I'm probably gonna read some more this evening, but 
but this is going to be my last vlog update because I feel like, like I've said a lot this week, I feel like I've talked a lot this week and I should stop just for everyone's sake probably so yeah really enjoying this this will obviously I will continue on in next week um but yeah it's been a very successful reading week I've finished three books I have gleefully DNF'd another um also not gonna lie these all look very aesthetically pleasing together and I've been thrilled with all of them um I'm not really doing star ratings or I mean I never really do reviews definitely continuing with this series very intrigued to see where it goes definitely gonna read more of T Kingfisher's stuff love this and I already knew I loved Caitlin Starling and I'm thrilled that I have her third published book already on my TBR and when I was having a look at on her Twitter earlier today I saw that she has a fourth book coming out next year which I think has like mad scientist vibes also presumably more queer women vibes which was also the case with this and yeah very successful reading week i have had i hope that you have enjoyed this reading vlog and i will catch you in the next one bye